Good morning everyone. This is Dan with Senior E-Bike and Adventures. Welcome to another ride video. Today we'll be doing 50 miles and then I'll be doing another 50 miles uh, either um, Wednesday or Thursday depending on the rain because we got some rain coming in both days. And I can't uh, do the ride tomorrow, so um, yeah, we're going to get out and uh, we're riding our Antioche AQ177 Pro Max. This bike will do between 100 to 200 miles on one battery. It's got a 750 watt rear hub motor and it's also got a 48 volt 6060 amp hour battery. The battery alone weighs 30 pounds on this bike. The bike's a heavy one, it's about 110 pounds, including the battery. But I have reviewed it before and did the 100 miles, so I have not done that in about a year or two ago. So uh, we're gonna do it again today. 50 of it anyway. It's a beautiful, gorgeous day here in Southwest Ohio, probably 65 degrees and sunny. We'll be riding our regular trail up to uh, the 30 mile marker and uh, then we'll uh, head south and go another 10 miles or so. I've got my backpack on the uh, back rack today. I didn't want to put all the weight on my back, especially riding 50 miles. I would be feeling it pretty good. If I have to, I would, but I don't want to, so let the bike do the work. I've got to get the uh, brakes bled on this uh, bike because I don't have a whole lot of braking in that uh, front tire there, so I'll be getting that fixed. We may be doing a, a brake bleed video here. I brought my uh, new bike pump with me that uh, Astro AI sent me. I reviewed that. That's coming out tonight's video. This video will also be released at 6 p.m. tonight. It's going to take me about three hours to do the ride. And we left about a little after nine, so we'll be talking about the bike. Um, either when I take a break on the trail or <clears throat> I might be doing with a very brief drone uh, description. I did bring my extra camera today so I can uh, do close-ups on the bike and when I'm talking about it. So we'll have the drone at a little bit of distance on me and then I'll have the other camera out um, doing the close-ups on the uh, bike. I'm not sure what that noise is. Let me stop here again and see if uh, I still get that noise when I'm uh, going here. Well, it would help to have my kickstand up. I don't know if it just fell down or I forgot to put it up, but yeah, that'll do it. That'll get you all kind of noise. Kickstand's still down. We're cruising along pedal assist three about 19, 20 mile an hour. I probably will see a few bikes out today, I'm sure. Mostly us retired people, for sure. <clears throat> Got a little breeze out here today, but it doesn't feel too bad at all. I'll probably be stopping and uh, eating lunch, maybe at McDonald's or one of them on the way. So we'll get a little break there from the videoing. And you also see a lot of fast forwarding video on this uh, clip as well. 
because three hours of riding is just a long, long video. And I'm going to condense this down to about 30 to 45 minutes from three hours. So when you see some different things happening on the video, you'll know what's going on. I know if you guys got a chance to get out and ride this weekend and what you're riding, I'm curious to know that. This will be somewhat of a range test today. And when I get back, I will not be recharging the battery because I got another 50 miles to ride on the next one. So we will just put the bike up and uh, resume our ride uh, on the last 50 miles. And we'll see how it does. I still had about 20 to 30% of my battery left when I did it before. And I'm going to ride about the same um, speed in Pedal Assist 3. So we'll keep everything as uh, close to as I can on the last ride because that was very successful. I did have a little problem getting this battery to lock down. But I think it may have uh, finally resolved itself on the lock. I'm hoping. I got my bright uh, yellow uh, construction smock on today. I wanted to be a little more visible on a longer ride than I normally do, even though that almost this entire ride will be on the rail trails. Of course, I got my coffee with me. That's kind of normal. Again, I got my backpack on the strap down to the rear uh, rack. And I've got just about anything I would need in there. Hopefully, I don't have any issues or problems today, but you just never know, and you got to be prepared, especially when you're going to be 25 miles away from home. Yeah, my son and uh, his girlfriend, or shall I say his fiance, they just got engaged, and uh, they come over yesterday. He had finally uh, been able to come over for my Father's Day, and he got me this really cool, uh, <clears throat> it's something that goes around your neck, and it's a cooling system, where you just recharge it, and there's, there's pretty good cool air comes out of that. So when it's really, really hot, that's gonna be nice on bike rides, where I can just put that around my neck. So I'm pretty impressed with that. Flashing a little coffee on my bike, but. I'll get that wiped off where I do the description. A lot of this bouncing around sometimes will, uh, even though it's got a magnet uh, lid on this Yeti, sometimes uh, coffee still splashes out of there. Let's see, what are we talking about as far as the bike world goes? I have another bike coming in tomorrow. It's definitely a low-end budget bike, but I told the folks that I would review it. I may have Caleb do it, I'm not sure. This is only a 16 inch, so we're gonna get that out in here in a couple days and get it reviewed. Then I'll start doing some rotational stuff on some of the bikes I have. I, uh, I might get the Cy Rusher Ranger out this week get the aerial rider Kepler out again this week and do some riding videos on those two my 26 uh, inch fat tire bikes then next week I'll get the Cy Rusher Komoda we'll get it out ride it my Ingway Engine Pro my dual battery setup we'll get that out and review that and then I've still got my King Bull light rider and I've got another bike, I'm trying to remember the name of it, that we'll get out and review it as well. Yeah, we'll get out and review those uh, probably next week. Well, I tell you, you can barely hear the motor on this thing. And with the dual suspension on this bike, it uh, really does well. Getting ready to go over some bumps right here. Starting here. Not terrible, but bumps. Where the roots are coming up on the trail. Come almost five miles now. Again, I try to pretty much stop at every stop sign I come up on, regardless if I can cross or not. 
just trying to be as safe as I can. Probably some cross country runners out uh, practicing. One of the local high schools here. I see them a lot out there in the summer. You'll see a group of them as well. They've really got some of the nicest trails in the nation right here. We've got so many of these rail trails that have a lot of canopy, as you can see, that you're not gonna get too hot when you're out riding. I don't care if it's 95 degrees, you're not gonna feel it. Not with all the canopy you have. Pretty busy intersection up here. We'll probably have to stop at uh, this one for a minute or so. <clears throat> See the batteries bouncing around on me again, so you hear a little bit clank and that's what it is. The release fell, uh, come loose on the, uh, on the lock. I think I've only got one zip tie. I could tie that thing down, but I'll stop right up here and see if I can get this to lock down, but it probably won't. That latch does not hold real well down on the uh, battery. But the weight of the battery is 30 pounds, so it's not going to lose connectivity for sure. So you might have to listen to the clanking going on as I'm riding today. On your left. I noticed some of this trail in the last year, we're starting to get a lot more uh, areas where they're gonna have to resurface and pave over. Because what you get is a lot of the uh, roots coming across the trail and lifting these, um, this asphalt up a little bit. It's not terrible, but I've noticed more in the last year than I have in the previous years. And I'm sure the Parks Department is aware of it. We're about 6.6 .6 miles in of our 50. Let's see what our volts are about now. Come 560 miles so far. We're at about 53.1 volts. So we've only used about uh, less than a volt so far. So that's pretty good. Wind's coming out of the north today, so that's why it's cooler for sure. I'm liking that because we're waiting to get our air conditioner or furnace installed tomorrow, so it's cooled down a little bit. I did bring an extra battery with me today for my um, phone, or I'm sorry, for my camera that I have on my uh, chest mount. Because I knew with this long ride, I would not be able to get a full three hours out of the uh, battery. So I brought an next one today. A few more people out today than I anticipated actually. <clears throat> but this part of the trail is usually pretty busy. Off to my right here is uh, some of the area I do off-road riding down along the creek. Yeah, this is one of my uh, bikes that I put up in the rafters. And I've got a chain hoist that'll hold 2,500 pounds, so this 110 was not an issue at all. But this way I can get it off the floor in my garage and I've got two trikes in the rafters. I do have one trike down, which I'll be riding this week, which is the uh, Moon Cool TK1 I'll be riding. So I've got five bikes in the rafters and uh, five of them down right now. On your left. I will be selling a few bikes off uh, this week probably, I'll be, uh, so let me know if you're interested in an e-bike and you're within a couple hundred miles of Dayton, Ohio, uh, yeah. on your left, I'll be selling uh, at least three bikes on your left, but I'll be putting uh, them down in uh, 
probably in the comment section. If somebody's interested, then put a comment down there. And uh, you'll have to come pick the bike up because I don't ship them, obviously. But if you live in the Columbus, Cincinnati, Indianapolis area, that's a pretty good uh, close, do close uh, distance, I would say, from where I'm at, where you could come pick it up. And I'll just meet you in a public place, and I take cash only. I don't take any kind of Venmo app or <clears throat> PayPal or none of that. <clears throat> so if anybody's interested in an e-bike, um, you can really get a great price on one from me. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they got very low miles on them as well. I mean, I have one bike that I rode 2,600 miles pretty much in one year, and I sold that one to Caleb. That was the aerial rider, uh, Rydell, and it's still going, so batteries need to be replaced on it, but... I've probably sold off 10 to 15 bikes over the last two years, I'm thinking. We're about nine miles in. We've almost come a fifth of the way so far today. Pretty quickly, actually. I may try to find a uh, hardware store up in Xenia where I can buy the, some zip ties, some big ones, so I can uh, zip tie that battery down. It's still bouncing. I got one zip tie, but I need two of them to get around that battery because it's massive. Of course, the battery bars have not moved, and they probably won't until I get to about 25 miles. They may go down one, maybe two, but probably one. So yeah, if you want great range on a bike, look at this Antioche AQ177, or look at the AQ8. I believe it's even got a bigger battery in it. Or maybe dual motors, I'm not sure. I have not looked at their website in a while. The last time I looked, and don't quote me on this, I'll have to correct this on the video. I think this is retailing for $13.50 right now. And folks, that's a great price. <clears throat> and again, remember, if you're going to be buying an e-bike, you better do it soon. Because the tariffs have been lifted on e-bikes uh, back around June 21st. And some of the manufacturers have already raised their prices at least $200 on uh, each bike. So if you're going to get one and the company hasn't raised the price on you, you better jump on it now. Because they're going to pass that right on down to the consumer without a doubt. Be coming up, uh, we're just past our 10 mile marker. I believe there's an O'Reilly uh, parts store up here. Maybe stop in there and get me some zip ties. I see a trike ahead of me. I'm not sure if it's going away from me or coming this way. I love riding my trikes. They're a lot of fun. But I'm still young enough, and I'm 72 now, where I can still ride these 20-inch uh, e-bikes pretty aggressively and 26-inch pretty aggressively. On your left. Thank you. How do you like your ad motor? Oh, I love it, man. 80 years old. I've got a couple of them that I review for. Um, I've got one by um, Mooncool, two of them by Mooncool. Very good trikes. Man, that's sweet. That ad motor is sweet, I'm telling you. Oh, man. Look at this. Got I, I tell you what, that, that ad motor builds a good product on your left. On your left. Thank you. That was an Ad Motor trike, great looking trike. Not sure which one that is. A buddy of mine is reviewing one uh, called the Spy Cam, or uh, Spy something, and uh, he's had some issues with it. And it was an Ad Motor. But yeah, I want to give a shout out to Gary up at uh, E Bike and Adventures up in New Hampshire. If you guys want to watch a really quality channel, look him up.
if I can remember, I'll try to put a link uh, to his channel on uh, my description box for you guys. Very, very good friend of mine up in New Hampshire. Does great repair videos, good studio videos, and a lot of really quality riding videos. So uh, I guess we'll give Gary a shout out. I talk to him all the time. I text him all the time. Um, for somebody I've never met in person, I really, really like this guy. And anymore, he's about the only one I'll give a shout out to. The, the other guys, that uh, they're not competitors. They're just reviewers like I am. They just seem to be, uh, I don't know, full of themselves, shall I say. They're very protecting of their bike channel, like you know that. Why didn't they get bikes that we get? And, but I don't want to make a big deal of that. There's enough uh, manufacturers out there that's going to get these e-bikes to review. Plenty of them out there. And I really don't do this channel for the bikes that I get. I really don't. I don't need the money, I don't need the bikes. Now, with that said, it's nice to get bikes. I can resell them and review them and keep what I want. That, that's very nice, no doubt. But I don't do it just for the bike. I mean, how many e-bikes can you keep anyway? You're gonna wind up getting storage units. I can still get them all in my garage and in the rafters and still get both of my vehicles in the garage. And I've only got a two and a half car garage, so yeah, you just gotta, uh, when you get too many of them, you just gotta get rid of them. They used to have a stop sign right there, but they took it down for some reason. So unless there's a stop sign there, I'm not gonna be stopping. Got another one coming up up here. But I guarantee you, this whole group of riders is gonna ride right through the stop sign. They just did. Must be six, seven of them. Never even slowed down, just kept on going. Again, that's not showing very good bike etiquette or very good uh, bike safety. You're just gonna blow these stop signs off. And there's several of them out there that do it. I would say 90% of bike riders, whether it be regular bikes or e-bikes, go through stop signs on these trails. Now, if I'm really low on a battery, I'm going to warn you before I go through the stop sign if, this, if I'm clear, because I don't want to kill the battery on having to pedal and throttle to get it to back up to speed. So, yeah, sometimes I'll do it, but I'm going to let you know when I'm going to do it. Another stop sign coming right up here, and there's probably, again, seven or eight of them in that group, and not one of them is going to stop. They'll look, but they, they're not going to stop. On your left. On your left. On your left. Thank you. On your left. Thank you. Call an e-bike, not a motorcycle. Legal for the trail. There's your spandex crowd right there. They was not about to get over for me. Motorcycle crossing, they said. Whatever. 
Some of these spandex people, they think they own the trail. I have got into more arguments with some of them people that they don't think these things belong on the trail, whatever. They ought to look up the state laws and see what it says. This bike is legal, 750 watt. It'll do 20 mile an hour, it'll do 28 if I wanted to, but I'm, I'm under the speed limit on this trail right now. But some of these guys, I don't know if it's just jealousy or whatever. I personally don't like riding with a bunch of other people. I just don't. Because everybody's got their own riding style. And I'm not angry at them guys. I'm not. I'm just frustrated that, you know, they got to respect the law. At least this motorcycle, they call it, stops at stop signs where they don't. They got all these flashing lights on their bikes and their helmets and whatever, and uh, they disobey the laws of the trail. That I got a problem with. That's enough of the uh, spandex crowd for now. So I run into another group of them. Like I said, I'll be cutting out a lot of this video, but that part right there I'll be uh, showing. Let you know how them guys handled themselves. And them guys are my age, so there you go. I had a confrontation one day with a guy where I was riding on a trail, just like a group of that I just passed. Could have been the same group, I don't know. But I uh, hollered on your left and two or three of them got over and this one guy refused to get over. So I finally had to go over in the grass and I'm on an e-bike and he's on a 10 speed to pass him. After I said on your left again, and then he gets mad at me and catches up with me. And I'm doing almost 20 mile an hour. He catches me and I got off my bike. Now you gotta remember, I carry wherever I go. Rather it be in my bike shirt in the back, rather it be in my pocket, I'm carrying. I hope I never, ever have to use my weapon for anything. But as I'm getting into the conversation with this guy, he's getting closer to me and spitting in my face. Right there's an assault, yelling at me and whatever, calling it a motor and it's not legal to be on the trail and he was just going off on me. So I, I, I said, you know, I asked you three times to get over. And then the first thing that comes out of his mouth is, you shouldn't be on the trail. So at that point, all I did is I had my weapon in the back of my smock, which you could see it through the netting, on your left. And I just turned around and he seen that I was carrying and he decided to leave me alone. Sometimes that little subtle warning, I never pulled my weapon out, it was just still in my smock. And I know you, a lot of people hate people carrying guns. I get all of that, whatever. There's the Second Amendment to protect that. And it's totally legal to carry on the bike trail. Actually, in Ohio now, you don't even have to have a CCW. I'm a trained person on these weapons. I, I haven't been the shooting range in a while, I will say that. But I've been a CCW carrier since 2012. But that was really the only incident that I can remember since I've been carrying where uh, it could have got ugly. If the guy would have swung at me, it would have been a bad day for him, I promise you that. So those are the kind of people that right there is just really, can get under my skin just a little bit you might say. Let's see, we're almost 15 miles in now, so. We got a little better than 10 to go.
It depends on how I'm feeling once I get up to the uh, 25 mile marker. I just may decide to go farther today. I don't know. I just wanted to uh, break it up in two days if I had to. But you'll get all these single uh, riders out that uh, they're very nice. Mo I have never had an issue with that. It's always when I get in those groups. They have to pull out their man card around all their other friends and let them know. But again, that's enough to spend next crowd. We're coming up into Zinni, Ohio here. This is uh, this is our 15 mile marker here. Up here is the McDonald's. I'll probably stop at and grab lunch on my way back. That was a neat bike back here. I'm not sure what that was. There's so many of them out there now that they're just coming out of the woodwork. On your left. Instead of going up to the uh, bike hub up here, I'll just be turning right here and uh, we'll head down the other 10 miles that I want to do today. A lot of bikes out today because I can see cars, that parking lot's almost full back here where got a lot of people out riding. Gorgeous day for it without a doubt. Yeah, this is where we'll be crossing over and uh, heading south on our ride. I don't get on this part of the trail too often, but if I'm going to do a longer ride, this is the way I usually go. Once I get up in this way a little a bit, there'll be a lot of canopy for sure going over the trail farther south that I go. Haven't been this way in quite a while actually. But it's just a beautiful little uh, trail. You'll see a few cutoffs that go, come up on the trail that go into some neighborhoods and things of that nature. But this is a pretty quiet trail, if I remember correctly, till people start throwing trash off to the sides, which I hate to see that, but they do. I'll come across some road crossings up as on my way down through here. There's not a lot of it, but there's a few. Saddle's very comfortable on this bike. I noticed that when I took it on my uh, long ride before when I rode this last year. I still have not went down any battery bars so far. Let me see where my voltage is. Still at 52.4 volts. We have not come down much. I was watching a video the other day that I'm going to look into this. Uh, AAA now carries um, insurance for e-bikes if you get broke down on the trail. I don't know how they're gonna get a vehicle back in here to do whatever they gotta do, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure now that uh, AAA covers that. When like a uh, motors get stranded on the road, I think that in some states now, I think they've got e-bike coverage as well. I'm sure they have seen the uh, increase in uh, popularity of these things. So they decided to uh, Start insuring some people. 
Now you can buy e-bike insurance, it's not cheap, but you can find it. I have not got it on my bikes because there's such a high deductible for theft and that's really the biggest thing I'm worried about is theft. Now, as you guys well know, most of my e-bikes have got air tags in them. In case some, somebody does get one, I'm gonna know where it went. But as you can see, the beautiful canopy we have over this trail. Of course, going under the interstate here. Again, this used to be the old rail trails. Off to the side, you can still see some of the old, uh, you might call them telegraph poles, because back, way back, that's what they were. This time of year, it's kind of hard to see them because we've got so much vegetation, but you get back into the fall, into spring, you'll see it. And you won't see a whole lot of traffic as far as bikes and stuff, but you'll see an occasional bike come down through here. If I kept on going this way, I can go right down into the Cincinnati area. A little marsh down here off the right of the trail. Full of snakes and everything else, I'm sure. Could almost wear a jacket today. Still a little breezy out and you get in this canopy and uh, you'll feel it. But it's still a gorgeous day to ride. I believe we might have some people walking. They're gonna, that's a good little walk wherever they're going to and came from. Good for them. They must be in their 70s, early 80s and they're out walking. Good for them. Another bike trail intersects here with a couple guys on some recumbent bikes coming up the trail but as you can just see all the canopy we have and now we're out in the country for sure but it's just gorgeous I think that's only the first squirrel I've seen come across the trail today that's kind of unusual usually see them dart down in front of you all the time seen a few baby rabbits though have not seen a deer yet this time of year you probably won't But you get up into the rut season in October, November, you're gonna start seeing quite a few deer on the trail. I think the last time I was down here, my son and I did a 50 mile ride that day. He had not ridden that much and boy, he got, his butt was really hurting when he got done. He wasn't used to uh, riding e-bikes. You paid the price that day. I told him, I said, this is gonna hurt when you get done. Next, about two days after you get done, you're gonna feel this. You, you stay on that saddle for 50 miles, you're gonna feel it. I even feel it after 50 miles. Again, this will take you all the way down into the Cincinnati area. Which is probably another 35 to 40 miles from where I'm at now. We're probably going to go about another, uh, maybe another six miles. We'll get to our uh, 50 mile mark. I'm sorry, our 25 mile marker. Then we'll turn around. I don't think I'll do much more than 50 today. But yeah, it's been a very enjoyable ride. I encourage you folks, if you have not ridden a bike in years and you're watching this video and you can afford and they come in all price ranges you can get them from seven hundred dollars and up get out and get you an e-bike get out and get some exercise because you'll be pleasantly surprised how far you can go get out and enjoy the beauty here's one of those old uh, rail uh, kind of like telegraph poles that I was telling you about. There's one there. But you're going to find out that 
you're going to get a ton of exercise regardless if you're either throttling just turning your legs these uh, casually as you're riding you're going to get tons of calories that you're going to burn I will probably burn close to 1500 to 1700 calories today on this 50 mile ride Now, with that said, I don't do a lot of these rides, but I will do them occasionally. I've got the battery capacity on this one. This Antioche AQ177 Pro Max. It's a 100 to 200 mile battery on this bike. So I don't feel, I don't feel uh, uncomfortable at all taking this bike out and doing a long range test because we got almost 20 miles right now and I'm still got full bars on my battery and it's still probably 52 volts and I believe the max on a 48 volt battery is like 55.6 volts so I'm only down about uh, two to three volts so far it's it's handled this really well as I mentioned, when I get done with my 50 miles today, I will go ahead and uh, put the bike up. I will not charge the battery. And then we're going to get out and do the other 50 miles uh, day this week, obviously. Again, I can't do tomorrow. I've got a furnace coming in and a new air conditioner, so i got to be home for that. So I think it's supposed to rain Wednesday or Thursday. I'll have to check the uh, forecast. But then I'll get out and do my other 50 miles. Then we'll see how much battery we got left once we get done. You guys will be pleasantly surprised on this bike how well it does. It kind of looks like a motorcycle. And then guys back here in the spandex crowd, they thought it was, and it's not a motorcycle. It's an e-bike. But it looks like a motorcycle. I mean, this thing is gorgeous. If you want to get off and show you this bike, it's gorgeous. Other than my coffee spilling down on the battery frame, which is con it's concealed, so I'm not worried about that. We got about four and a half miles to go, and that'll be our halfway point. For today. I'll probably be uh, changing my battery out on my camera coming back. I'll be taking a little break, get off the bike here when I do that. crossing quite a few little creeks. We'll be coming up on a uh, reserve before too long up here on the left where you'll see a lot of water and little area we call Spring Valley, Ohio. But yeah, this is a good little ride today. Now they are definitely making uh, e-bikes now that are going farther and farther with the battery technology that's changing. Um, you're going to start seeing a lot of e-bikes that got regenerative uh, batteries on them, which means once you start coasting down hills and uh, things like that, that uh, it recharges the battery. I have one bike that does that, the Ingway Engine Pro regenerates its battery. I've watched videos, the guy going up a, pretty much a mountain, and uh, he was down to about 20% of his battery when he got to his point he wanted to stop at. And by the time he got back at the bottom of that hill or mountain, he had already charged that battery back to 100%. So yeah, that technology is coming on the scene. And that's the biggest thing that stops people from uh, going too far is battery degradation. 
I mean, you got to take the weight of the rider. You have to take the wind conditions, the uh, terrain. I'm on a really, really flat trail today. So, uh, and that's what really uh, stops people from riding long distances. They're just the fear of uh, running out of the battery as they're riding. We're about 21 and a half miles in. We'll go about another uh, three and a half. But again, let me know what you guys think about this little ride today. It, uh, it's been a long one for sure. It's going to be much longer time I get home, but... The bike has handled the uh, trail really well. I did check my air pressure. These tires take 30 pounds of pressure. They're only 20 by 4 inch, but uh, they call for 30 pounds of pressure, and that's what I'm riding on right now on this uh, on this Antioche. I'm going to get better distance for sure on uh, properly inflated tires. But you got some really nice ravines down on the sides here. Got a little trailer park here on the right. We're getting ready to cross. We got a little area to the left here called Travertine Fin. In other words, it's an area that's kind of marshy. Yeah, you can see the uh, mobile homes over here off to the right in this little uh, mobile home park. I mean, how cool is it to have right in your back door a bike trail? Yeah, get find your way into the opening from the trailer park and you can just go out and ride. Or take a long walk, whatever you want to do. On your right. This little area right here is called uh, Spring Valley. We're definitely south of town here from the Dayton area. We'll be going about another uh, a little less than three miles, that'll be our halfway point for the day. I used to own a pest control company and I've done a lot of sales down in this area over the years. But all these people live in this little local area, they got this nice little bike trail that just goes right in their own backyard. And that's where we'll end the video up here at the uh, 25 mile marker and uh, I'll be filming going back as well. And again, I'll be cutting out a lot of the footage where I'm not talking or... <clears throat> we don't need a two-hour video for sure, because nobody's going to watch it. But I'll leave in some interesting things, like the group of riders that I read, the spandex crowd I crossed, I'll leave that in. You can see how impolite some people are. Looks like they're putting in a new bridge here. They must have had the bike trail closed a little bit back there when they was working on that overhead of that bridge because I could tell they got the, the uh, caution screening on the left side over there. We'll check our voltage when we get to our 25 mile marker here and uh, That'll tell me about how much battery I still have left. I've got a little chart on my phone that uh, I can look at the uh, voltage and see what percentage of the battery still remains. And with this 60 amp hour battery, it's not going to use a whole lot today. I'll probably still have about 60 to 70 percent of my battery left when I get done today. But as you can see how heavily the canopy is on this on this tr trail, it, uh, you're not going to get hot riding this way. You're in a heavily wooded area along through here.
got right at about a mile to go. So that was a uh, pretty easy 25 miles once I get done. Then we'll turn around and do the 25 back. That is a buddy of mine that I know that I see 20 to 25 miles back on the trail. I see him all the time, so boy, he rides a lot. So he's taking that southern trek today as well. And he's not on an e-bike, he's on a regular recumbent. We'll get probably through that next intersection and go just a little bit, and that's gonna be our 25 miles. We got about a half a mile to go here. As you can see, this entire ride has been on the bike trail. I have not had to do any road riding whatsoever, other than crossing intersections, and that's been it. Actually, that sun feels pretty good once you get into it. I've been at a steady 19 mile an hour the entire way. I'll be getting off here in just a minute or so, about 10 or 25 miles, but I'm gonna, I think there's a park bench up here on the right. It's pretty close to that 25 mile marker, maybe a little more. That's where we'll uh, take a break. We just now hit our 25 there. There are quite a few people on the trail today, even down through here, I'm seeing quite a bit. pull off uh, right here and um, that's kind of where we're going to be our halfway point today this seems to be uh, right at that point so go up here and pull up here just a little bit better get off the trail here a little bit so yeah we're going to go ahead and um, get off right here Yeah, I want to thank you guys for uh, riding along on this long, long ride today. And uh, this is the 25-mile marker. Again, this is the Antioki AQ177 Pro Max. This is my 750-watt, 48-volt, 60-amp-hour battery. So, yeah, we'll be talking about it a little bit more once I get home. But this is the, uh, this bike is a beast. So, yeah, uh, so share, like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. And I will see you guys on the next ride video. Alrighty everyone, hey Dan with Senior E-Bike and Adventures. Hey, we did get in 48 miles today. I've got to do 52 miles on the next one. And um, yeah, let's see how many um, amps I have left in the battery here. Alrighty, we still got 49.7 volts i'm not sorry not amps we got 49.7 volts still left and um 
let me check real quick what that's going to be as far as um, battery still left. And folks, that's still 70% of the battery that I have left on the um, bike ride. And I've got 48 miles on it. And we're still sitting at that percentage left on the battery. So, yeah, I did really good. But anyway, we're going to finish the other 50 miles in the day or two. And I'll put that video up as well. But I want to thank you guys for riding along with me on this long ride today. And share and like and subscribe. Hit the bell notification. And I will see you guys on the next video.